Hi and welcome to the Cinelera CV uh, tutorial on how to use the perspective effect to make uh, 3D transitions. Um, this isn't completely comprehensive but it should give you an idea of how to use the effect to go on and make your own interesting effects. The simplest one we're going to do is to use the perspective here just between two clips. So put the perspective on your first clip, go back to the start, oh, I've, you see I've, I've got it from a previous test, just hit reset. There you go, you want it just ordinary. Now the perspective works on on a hundred by hundred grid, so for example if I just start randomly dragging stuff, you'll see what I mean. We're just stretching it all over the place. I like it on stretch, if you go on sheer, it, it, it doesn't actually, it just kind of blocks it out. Perspective is the same kind of thing as stretch, but it, it, it stretches it more, it warps it more, and I, I prefer the stretch, I think it looks better for these effects. But let's just reset it again then at the end, one frame before the end there, um, what we want is to have, have it moved, so we're going to start with this guy over here, into the middle, into the middle, so choose 50 and 50 for your right hand, and then these ones we also want to go into the middle, but we also need to move it down to the actual centre here, so that it looks like it's, it's turning, and you'll, you'll see why in a minute so we want to go 50 for both of these. So one side you want to have in the center but still tall, and the other one you want to actually have in the center in all ways, if that makes sense. So as you can see then when we watch it play, it looks like it's turning. Yeah. So now we need to do the next one. So I actually find it easier to just hit the reset button at the end here because sometimes it's very difficult to tell which pin is which apart when they're all in the same place and you end up turning it inside out and back to front and all sorts. So now we work from there and this is going to be coming out to the other side which means that we want this side to be in the middle but still tall and we want this side to be in the middle and squashed vertically as well because it's the opposite side to before so the 50s all around there and as you can see now this opens that way so what it looks like all told is that it turns around you see Woo! it's great let's just play that obviously if you take me and, and, and there you have it now if you want to be a little fancier um, you can let's just detach these I'm going to show you how to do this um, so that you can actually see both of them at the same time for that we need another track so let's add a track and let's just drag this up here so you need to have so for this this overlap area here this is where your um, your, your transition is going to take place um, so let's add perspective to the lower one for now uh, and again, we're just going to reset that because we want it to be ordinary here. And then we're going to reset it again here. This is the start of the transition. Yep. Then let's just turn this off so we can actually see what's going on here. So at the end here, before the end, we want to make this, oh no sorry, wrong one, ignore me, 50, make this, okay, so it's squashed, um, and then take this, keep it large, but we want it all the way over here, and all the way over again, so again we're effectively doing the same thing but further over, so as you can see it's moving, it's moving nice and smoothly, so we're going from normal to it being forced into that shape. But the reason this makes a difference is that in this case we're going to now go to the top, the top frame and add the perspective on here, oh, honestly. Yep. And again, I find it easier to reset the place we know it needs to be normal at. Just turn this back on. Um, and here we're going to have the opposite issue, so we want this this side to be squashed 
to 50 and 50 and these over here to be at one all the way over and move this all the way over. Now these keyframes have to occur at the same time or the, the videos won't sync up between the two clips but as you can see it ends up looking like it's moving three-dimensionally like on a cube and of course if you added more tracks you could indeed make a complete cube um, you know moving on but but there you go so that's the idea about how to do 3d video transitions and 